Stephanie McMahon, the filthy, dirty, disgusting, brutal, bottom-feeding trash bag hoe. Gosh, I'm never going to work for WWE, am I? Well, in for a penny, in for a pound. The billion-dollar princess is all set to become the queen of wrestling when she assumes control of the business with her big hammer enthusiast of a husband. She's one of the biggest figures in wrestling, ranking a solid nine on the Leno scale of strong chins. And while the Lady Macbeth of WWE may be on top of the world, there are more than a few ignoble moments in her past. This list is basically my WWE career suicide. Side note, hope you f***ing like it. I'm Adam from WhatCulture.com and here are 10 things WWE want you to forget about Stephanie McMahon. Number 10, kissing Bischoff for no reason. Eric Bischoff is my Patronus, my grinning deity, the man after whom I model every single fibre of my being, the handsome, virulent tooth factory. Remember when Bischoff was the GM of Raw and Steph took Smackdown, the two would bicker constantly and a sexual tension was so thick you could spread it on toast. Well, it turns out the two actually gave in to their feelings for one night, just one, and it was never mentioned again. It was Halloween and Eric Bischoff broke into Steph's office disguised as her father, which already conjures so many delightful psychological quandaries. Eric removes his Vince mask and then grabs Stephanie for a kiss. She initially fights him off and then it appears like she likes it and then the two kiss on a desk. Then it's forgotten about entirely. I mean, it makes sense to me that someone would want to kiss Eric Bischoff, but you'd think they'd at least get a story out of it. Fun fact, Eric would then go on to kiss Linda McMahon because L-A-D. Number nine, HLA. The Ruthless Aggression era was really weird. Like, the Attitude era was grotty, but this is completely f***ed all the way up. In 2003, Eric Bischoff, and again, if I had a game of Thrones house, his smile would be on my f***ing banners. He introduced a new company policy whereby two lesbians would occasionally come to the ring and kiss in front of a bunch of rowdy male fans, thereby pinning good taste to the wall and repeatedly shiving it in the stomach. At Unforgiven 2003, because of a match stipulation, Steph had to engage in HLA with two women in their underwear, rubbing her and I have a law degree, what am I even doing here? Anyway, out came Rikishi in drag, she kissed him too and it's all such a PR nightmare. Never mind. Number eight, the I quit match. Speaking of public relations, what says fun Sunday night out than a father throttling his own daughter with a bit of lead pipe? At No Mercy 2003, good year for Steph that, Big Daddy Vinny decided that Steffels wasn't being a very good GM and wanted her to quit. How? By making her participate in an I quit match, which by the way is what they'll have to do to me if they want me out of this job. I will burn all of you down before I go. It sounds like an intriguing match on paper, but in reality, oh geez, it was awkward watching a man hit his own daughter with a pipe and then choking her. It's just, it's just a bad nine minutes. Number seven, backstage tyrant. Being a McMahon guarantees two things, that you will walk weirdly and that you have the ability to throw around arbitrary power backstage. In 2002, Steph was made director of creative writing and since leaving the company, several ex-WWE writers have come out of the woodwork to say that she is as tricky to work for as it is for Run DMC to rock a rhyme, rock a rhyme that's right on time. The reoccurring problem that Steph had with the writers is that she believed they should not act like marks. In wrestling terminology, a mark is someone who enthusiastically buys into what the wrestlers are selling. Steph would chastise her writing staff for acting like marks if they complimented a wrestler on his work in Japan or talked about bleeding or talked about any aspect of the business. Once, Court Bauer used the term blading and for being an outsider and using an insider term, Steph forced him to go around the locker room and apologise to each and every wrestler personally. Number six, the affair with Triple H. I don't know if you've noticed this, but Triple H and Stephanie McMahon are an item. I know they try and hide it on TV, but the clues are there if you look for them. There's one. There's another. This is a big clue. Triple H and Steph were thrust together for the McMahon Helmsley regime and a relationship between the two blossomed like a flower made of veiny meat. Problem was, Triple H was engaged to China at the time and in 2001, according to interviews that China has had since leaving the company, she discovered the affair, contacted Vince who replied, well, I guess the jig is up. As she told it, she was let go from the company shortly afterwards. Now, the exact circumstances of China's departure from the company are spotty at best, but the affair occurred and since China's death in April, WWE will definitely definitely want it forgotten. Number five, that charity tweet. Steph is a weird creature, not just because she's a McMahon and is therefore biologically closer to a doom cloud than a person, but because she's one of the biggest heels in the business, but also the face of WWE's numerous charity drives. WWE have been incredibly present in the charity sector in recent years with Be A Star, Susan G. Komen, Connor For The Cure, and many other worthy causes, which is great, until you see this tweet sent by Stephanie McMahon in which she quotes Biz Stone, co-founder of Twitter, and saying, philanthropy is the future of marketing is the way brands are going to win. Well, doesn't that just throw every single charitable thing that WWE's ever done in a much darker light? It's all a calculated marketing campaign. I mean, sure, the fans could probably guess that, 
but don't actually say it. Number four, the boob slip. Ah, boobs. Here's to them. Everyone raise a glass. Stephanie McMahon has a pair of boobs which have fluctuated in size over the years as eagle-eyed Chris Jericho often took delight in pointing out. Well, it turns out that her boobs quite like the attention and decided to go into business for themselves on an episode of Smackdown. In 2002, the March 14th episode for the fact fans amongst us, Triple H was feuding with Jericho and Stephanie at the time and had the billion dollar princess set up for a pedigree when her lady boobs fell out of her dress. It's been edited on the network, sorry pervert, but live, it was briefly out there for all to see. Number three, the incest angle. Vince McMahon is crazier than a lift full of rabid bats, and there's no better evidence for that than the one time he pitched an incest angle for TV. No, seriously, this actually full-on happened. Steph herself spoke out about it on a DVD about Vince. She was pregnant at the time, and ever the bat showman, Vince pushed to have himself be revealed as a father. No, seriously, this actually happened. What happens in Vince's head? It must be like the Battle of the Somme in there. When Steph said, no Vince, no my actual father, you're not going to be the dad of my unborn baby, Vince said, well, okay. How about Shane? Why must you be so mad all of the time, Vince? Number two, the 9-11 comment. After the horrific attacks of 9-11, WWE actually did a great thing. People throw a lot at the company, but by organizing a live SmackDown mere days after the attack, the first mass assembly of its kind since, Vince & Co sent a brave and powerful message that we are not afraid. That's great. It's just a shame that during that episode on September 13th, Steph put her foot in her mouth in a big way. She did a piece to camera about how a few years ago, her family also came under attack. The incident she was referring to, the steroid trial, where Vince was taken to court for allegedly distributing drugs to his wrestlers. Whether it comes from a place of attempted empathy or not, comparing the deaths of thousands to your rich father being taken to court for drug distribution is a hugely tasteless and frankly delusional thing to say. And number one, Macho Man. And so so the nails go in my coffin, bang, bang, bang. Right, so this has always been merely a rumor, but it's one of the most persistent and shocking in wrestling, so we're just gonna tell you. In November 1994, Macho Man Randy Savage left the company, and allegedly one of the reasons for his departure was that he had slept with Stephanie McMahon. To complete the picture, Steph would have turned 18 in September 1994, so... Oh dear, a lot of oh dear. WWE have never breathed a word on whether or not this rumor is true, but it's worth noting that of all the characters to leave WWE for WCW back in the 90s, all of them came back except for the Macho Man. He was never seen again on live TV and scarcely mentioned until after his death. This is putting two and two together and coming up with five, but even if it's only a rumor, it's definitely something WWE want you, me, and everyone to stop talking about. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm off to make my front door as sledgehammer proof as possible. And that's our list. Did we miss any out? Tell us about it in the comments. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter here. I'm Adam from whatculture.com, and I'll see you soon.